These 30 teenagers have just completed their GCSEs. But instead of relaxing, they've been transported back to the 1960s and the world of the secondary modern school. Most of these children are predicted grade C or below in their GCSEs and are the equivalent of the 11 plus failures of 40 years ago. Okay, one, two, three. Good. Kids who failed the 11 plus usually went to a school like Hope Green and studied needlework, typing, bricklaying and woodwork. Skills that have mostly vanished from today's schools. The first few days at Hope Green exposed their lack of practical skills. Their complete disrespect for authority. I do not want to hear a single word from you. You're asking me questions I'm going to answer. And saw an attempted breakout. Go back! So can practical lessons start to motivate our modern youngsters? Or will they continue to underachieve? What sort of behaviour do you consider this? The kids may think they have the upper hand, but things are about to change. Matron is back from her holidays to lay down the law. Morning, girlies. Matron's here. Time to get up. I'm not impressed with this room oh. at all. Come on, you should be going now. Get up. Oh, my word. Have to be a lot tidier than this, girls. This is an absolute mess, this room. Oh, God. No, no, matron. Come on, get on. She's really evil. She's telling our room's messy when I think it's perfectly fine. If there's one thing matron won't tolerate, it's a slovenly appearance. Why is your hair sticking up? It actually does it. You need to understand this relationship you and I have got. You do not joke with me. And wipe that silly little girly smile off your face. If I see any hair standing up, your quality and quantity of life will diminish fast. I've got a cow's look doing this, so it's going to be sticking out. Well, I can have that cut off. Can we try and pull our trousers up a little bit? Did that hurt? I'm yes. sorry if it did. But can we try and pull our trousers up? Can we all, always, always make sure that our flies are done up? Thank you. They may be a complete shambles now, but Matron is feeling confident. They have to learn not to mess with me. And, uh... If they want a fight, they can have a fight, but they won't win. At Secondary Moderns, the boys and the girls were often taught different subjects in preparation for their different roles in life. Sexual equality was unheard of. Today, the boys have their first lesson in car maintenance, using Mr. Vince's Triumph Herald. This was a popular subject in the 1960s, and one that is largely unheard of in today's state schools. It all fits together. So I mean, what we're going to do for the next sort of um, 45 minutes is a demonstration from me on the simple task of the uh, jacking up of the um, car, the removing of the wheel, and then the replacing of the wheel. A very simple task, fellas, which when you first have your first breakdown, when you're on a hot date, okay, it's very important that you're not dithering around in the trunk. That will be the low point in your adult male life, gentlemen. You must be able to cope with this, like, for example, for example carving the Sunday joint. It's just part of the burden that we have to carry as men. Changing attire is a skill we seem to have lost. The AA gets called out 400,000 times a year by people who cannot perform this basic task. Yeah, we should get taught things like this at yeah. school, because this is just our basic knowledge that we should do. We're actually interested in this as well, whereas at school we'd probably just be wandering off by now. Right, stand by, go! At the moment, only one of them has ever changed the tyre. In just four weeks' time, they'll not only be proficient at this, but also changing the oil and cleaning the spark plugs. 
some fingers onto those nuts, get them spinning. Unlike modern lessons, which are largely theory, kids learnt in the 60s by getting their hands dirty. And the boys love it. There we go, here we go. Bingo! Yeah, I definitely feel we've got a, a, a good advantage over the girls. We kind of, you know, taking cars apart and hitting them with mallets and stuff. It's certainly very different, and I think the girls are finding it quite uh, different. You know, equality's out the window with this, and it's all boys do this and girls do that. But I think it's good because it's more fun what we're doing. For the girls, their first lesson of the day is how to clean, using the school's purpose-built flat. Great excitement then, this is your first flat, you've just got married. In the 1960s, one in three women married in their teens. Today, it's one in 25. Right, it's got, it's got all the mod cons here, you're renting this, but you can see from here, you can look at this, look at the carpet, it's got all bits and pieces on. Look at this, look at this here. It's not very clean to bring your husband in. Look at this teapot. It is so dusty and filthy. I can't imagine you pouring your husband a nice cup of tea out of there. Why can't your husband um, do something? Of course you wouldn't let your husband pour his own tea. You'd pour it for him as a good wife. I don't like tea. Most secondary moderns in the 1960s had their own specially constructed flats in which the girls could learn to cook, clean, and iron. They could even hone their housewife skills on the head teacher. June's finished her polishing, Mavis has made the beds, Anne's done the sweeping, but what's a home without a man about the house? And that's where the headmaster, Edwin Crawford, comes in, and trust a man to know the right time to arrive. This is one cup of coffee that'll be right up to standard, but not unless he comes back for a second will she get top marks. Fair dues. I mean, we just have to do skipping. You've got to put a bit of effort behind it. Many of the girls study food technology in their modern schools, which has replaced 1960s domestic studies. How to clean clearly isn't on the curriculum. The girls aren't interested. They're just larking about. Sitting down, you're not the husband, you're the wife. Look, it's all going down. Where's the float? Switch the tap off. Switch the tap off first. Teacher Sherilyn Lloyd-Jones has just four weeks to turn them from disasters into domestic goddesses. That is not good enough. Look at this sugar basin, the milk jug, the teapot. Has it? Look, look at this, girls. It's disgusting still. We've learned that. A small amount of bleach would be better than the whole We learnt never pot. to clean again. That's enough, that's enough, that's enough. All right, get that fourth brick in as soon as you can. By contrast, the boys' behaviour is improving. They've gone the whole two-hour lesson without any messing about. Even more of the more troublemakers are suddenly thinking, oh my god, I've actually got a... Their, their, their discipline has definitely improved. Shinna Onawinde was a persistent troublemaker in the first few days at Hope Green. But now his behaviour has undergone something of a transformation. Well, it's getting into the, into the field, I'm actually liking it, I find it fun now. Because well, everyone's being good now, and because everyone's being good, we're getting treated nice and everything, so I'm just enjoying it. And all the teachers seem to like me now, so I'm happy. Mr Vince is impressed. Change orientation, stand by there, well done, Goin. One of the things that we've noticed uh, with certainly the 15 boys that we've got, is that many of them did seem very apathetic. But many of these people who seem so sluggish in their bearing, when presented with a chance to dash around and jack up a car and all that sort of stuff, suddenly become extremely animated. It's definitely being confirmed for us that these people are being re-included in the education system purely by the inclusion of these practical tasks. But the girls aren't quite so happy. Rather than enjoying their own practical lessons, they can only think of what the boys are doing. They're out there having fun and I'm in here. 
putting bits of paper on a tray and it's just totally unfair. And I don't like the sixes one bit. It's like just assuming that women are less than men and that men are the greater sex, which I don't think they are. I don't think it's really, really unfair. Still to come. Certainly some very imaginative spellings. None of them are correct, however, imaginatively. Back to basics in English. It's not funny! It's disgraceful! <laughs> and love is in the air. I do not approve of impure thoughts. Oh, no, sure. Thank you. I'm very against that. Many secondary moderns were educational dumping grounds, but some, like Hope Green, were shining examples. Well, I have, of course, an important notice, and this is about the election of head boy and head girl. Today, the kids will find out who's impressed the headmaster, Richard Fawcett, for the ultimate accolade. The head girl will be Stevie Harmon. <laughs> Stevie, I think Wannabe model, Stevie Harmon, is one of the few girls who hasn't been naughty yet. I'm really delighted, Steve. Look forward to working with you. Congratulations. That's really excellent. And I'm delighted to say that the head boy will be Goyer. Goody two-shoes, Perry Goyen is a natural choice. Well done, Goyen. I'm really delighted about this. Absolutely delighted. Congratulations. He's head boy at his own school in Leighton Buzzard. Hi, my name's Perry, and I live here. Well, actually, I live in this little bit with my family. My least favourite subject would be maths, because I'm really quite number blind. And the numbers just get me all in a fluster and I just, just panic when I, all these numbers coming at me. I don't think he's ever going to sort of shine in English or maths really, um, but I think he's more um, hands-on. My style is probably really like Perry really, I, I call it Perry style. Basically, yeah, when I'm going to school and I would, I would just wear a hat as well. What's his favourite one? Oh, he's definitely his Burberry. Burberry. <laughs> <laughs> he's going Burberry. I think it's good to be a bit different than that and just to be myself and, and not care what anyone thinks really. Just, I, I just think it's good to be unique. Yeah. <laughs> well, I didn't think I was going to get it because I haven't like, spoken to Head Mark and said, oh, I want to be Head Boy. I've just been like happy when he spoke to me. I think that might be why because I'm just always, I'm just taking this experience and just making the best of it and I'm just having a really good time. There's another reason he's pleased. Perry's getting the hots for the new head girl. I'm glad it's Stevie as well actually. That's, 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 that's an extra bonus. <laughs> <laughs> It's the kids' first English lesson. Their teacher, Jeanette Gibson, is a no-nonsense disciplinarian. I'm going to wait for the fidgeting to stop. Her nickname at her school is Hitler. I have a surname. Stand up. Stand in the corner. First to fall foul of her is Sheena on a windy. We're going to begin this lesson by trying to sort out the wheat from the chaff. Who can spell and who cannot. English in a secondary modern was about completing simple tasks, like writing a job application letter. To do so, everyone had to master the basics of handwriting, punctuation and spelling. When I call your name, Come to the board and write the word on the board 
is Stevie. And I'd like you to spell the word remember. Half of today's GCSE English exam is coursework, completed on computers using electronic spell checkers. No, have another go. No wonder. Real spelling looks like a forgotten art. No. Re. Oh, yeah. Mem. Burr. You must learn how to spell that, Stevie. It's the kind of word you're going to use all the time. Imaginatively. Imaginatively. No. So far, I think we've had all the letters that were required, but just not in the right order. Technical. Very imaginative, but incorrect. Pursued. It's not funny! It's disgraceful! No. Luke Graham has predicted a respectable grade C for his English GCSE. And like most of these kids, is planning on further education and a degree. Thank you. Can you spell me the word tongue, please? Tongue? Tongue, the thing that's in your mouth, ah. that you lot can't seem to stop wagging. No. Tongue. T-O-U-G-U-D. Tug. No, have another go. Tongue. Well, this... Yes. Believe me, you have spelt it incorrectly. Trust me on this. Right, spell it out in your head. That says Toog. It says Toog. Be quiet. Let's see if it's actually gone in, shall we? Today's education means everyone can take GCSEs. But for less academic kids in the 60s, education was divisive. If you weren't good enough, you didn't take the exam. Then called a CSE. Next week, it's mock examinations. To determine whether you are going to be able to sit the CSE exam. At that point, we will establish if anybody needs to be withdrawn. I sincerely hope that no one will have to bear the shame of being withdrawn from English. Having said that, we have a great deal of work to do. Stand behind your desks. Don't talk! This lack of basic skills comes as no surprise to Miss Gibson. Students don't read in the same way that they perhaps did in the 60s. In the 60s it was seen as a recreation to read, it was an enjoyable thing to do. Whereas now, teenagers have their computers and they have video games and they have television. There is so much else for them to be doing. The thought of actually sitting down and reading a book and thereby increasing their vocabulary and their ability to be able to spell more difficult words is going to be greatly diminished. I tried really hard today even though the teacher is just so horrible and like she just shouts at every minute and it's like so annoying. I think the English at my school is much more funner than the English here because I think it's much more harder here and um, I thought I was really good at it when I was at um, my other school but now here I think I'm going to do really bad. <laughs> Lessons are over, and it's the first chance for the boys and girls to socialise together. They're starting to get frisky. Are you guys not missing girls? Girls, get close to girls, man. I am, man. Oh, I was just sitting next to uh, four of them. Ah, <laughs> oh, man, I miss girls, man. Have you been on holiday? No. Oh, no, I did. I did my tan. How's it getting your tan? Oh, I went down. Perry Goyan has developed a major crush on head girl Stevie Harmon. Why must I be a teenager in love? He can't seem to leave her alone. She's playing along for now, but her heart is set on bigger things. Hi, I'm Stevie and this is my mum. And I'm pretty and pink. 
I think my dream job would be becoming a glamour model. The girls that do it have real good class about them and they get loads of attention drawn to them. <laughs> she wants to have a boob job and that's all she talks about. Yeah, I want a boob job when I'm 18 so I've got to save up about £3,000 for it. But I think I'm going to be able to do it because I've wanted it for so long now. Because I feel that I've had like small boobs <laughs> all my life, which I have, and I think it gives me that extra boost of confidence which makes you feel good about yourself, in a certain way quite sexy about yourself, and I think that would, I think that'd be cool. I don't think I'd like to be like Jordan because her boobs are too big. It's time for bed. But Perry isn't thinking about sleep. Just the head girl. When I see her... We, we, we make sure we get eye contact and then and, and sit around notes and then as soon as as um, it's recreation I make sure I go to her and actually I think she she does the same so it's vice versa so it's so it's quite good at the moment definitely something's got to happen most definitely fingers crossed most definitely fingers crossed Stevie's got a name to show you she's really stoked about it so yeah oh. find her Stevie. To give Cupid a helping hand, Perry has made his feelings for Stevie clear in a love letter. With the utmost discretion, she gives it to her roommates to read. Oh, he's a lovely. Oh, he's just a good friend, and that's it. Yeah, let's go home for now. Oh, Stevie, that is so good. No, honestly, it's nothing like that. He's just a good friend because I love someone at home and I don't want anything to happen to him. <laughs> Perry's got no chance. And to make matters worse, Matron has got wind of his advances. Being a bit sweet on somebody. Um, a certain somebody, you give him the best. Sarah? Oh. Really? Yes, you can't admit to that. I know. And is the beer, is it, is it reciprocated? Um, I had a word with her tonight, this evening, who was in recreation. And um, not just yet, I don't think, not just yet. So I'm a bit disappointed, but we've only been here four days. Well, let me tell you that I do not approve of impure thoughts. Oh, not sure. Thank you. Ooh. I'm very against that. <laughs> It's been a busy day. Before bed, there's a chance to reflect on their new school and the modern world they've left behind. Doing a lot more practical work and things, which is good. I mean, I don't like spending that much time sitting behind a desk, so it's, yeah, it's definitely different. I'm feeling great, happy, looking forward to tomorrow, just having a really good time, basically. Every little thing that you want to do, you have to ask and put your hand up, and the teachers are horrible. You know, they're, like, really strict all the time. And in modern day, you're, you're like, you're not, obviously, we're not in a boarding school, but you're not, like, escorted everywhere. You're given freedom. You're given a chance to express your opinions and have them heard. And here, you, you're placed in a box. You're not allowed to do anything. It's so annoying. Still to come, for bad behaviour, there's punishment. I must respect the school rules. It's different now, isn't it, sunshine? And for good behaviour, there's reward. Today, the kids at Hope Green have a busy timetable of outdoor activities. They're fed a healthy diet to keep their energy levels up. Once a week, there's a special extra treat for breakfast. Kippers. Breakfast is the most important meal of the day. We have a very, like, don't shrug, 
We have a really long morning here. I mean, I haven't eaten every day but since I've been here and I haven't been hungry until lunch. I'm not getting into this argument. All I'm wanting then is for Hannah to eat her Weetabix and then I'm going to come back and she's going to taste a little piece of kipper. Well, we've got, we, we, we've got plenty of bowls. Hannah Benjamin is a fatty eater. And like most modern kids, used to getting their own way. What do you think? It is too smoky, salty. But at least you've tried it. Like, how's the Weetabix? Now then, you've got to tell me the truth now. Did you finish that? None of your friends finished it. And have you tried this, Kipper, now? Like, come on then, that's just that tiny bit there. Chew it, chew it. No, be, have, be open-minded. It's fine. It's, it's not going to do you any harm. Shh. Be open. Just chew it, chew it. Then get the flavour and then just swallow. It's all over now. All over and done with. You've done it. Okay. So you did do it in the end. And you may, you may want to have another piece. Right. Well, girls, I'm really pleased with you because every single person has had a piece of kipper. So you've achieved something today. If you've never tried it before, at least you've tried it now. Right. Let's get this table cleared up then. The 30 kids are being pushed hard in their practical subjects. Woodwork, needlework, bricklaying, typing and cookery. In just under four weeks' time, they'll sit exams, and we'll discover if these less academic kids do better with their hands than their brains. There's a lot to do. But it's not all hard work. It's time for the boys' first leisure activity. Scouts with Mr. Vince. Look at sir. He looks well cool. Look at sir. Right, gentlemen, it's scout time. Let's go! In the 1960s, 50% of all secondary modern children were involved in clubs and societies outside of school. In 1964, scouts and guides were hugely popular, with well over a million boys and girls willing to don a woggle or sing around a campfire. It was here that they learned the traditional values of teamwork, obedience and service, as well as how to make a slipknot and be prepared for unforeseen events. Lack of saucepans is no problem if you use a bit of ingenuity. Grapefruit skins do just as well for cooking the peas. Right, gentlemen. <laughs> Only one of our boys is already a scout. Attendance of 16-year-olds at Scouts and Guides has plummeted in 40 years by over 50%. We now spend twice as much time watching telly as our 60s predecessors. Right, we're looking good. Four little scouting peas in a pod. Well done, fellas. You look good. Now, except you, Barbara. I'm afraid that the beret band, as it's known, which is this no, plastic thing... Head, what? Okay, I'll do it. <laughs> look, Barbara, you must try and use English as your preferred medium of conversation, not some ridiculous <laughs> South London patois that although maybe understood, stop. Right, that's got to be horizontal. I look like a tip. <laughs> you don't like that, yeah? Blue tip, yeah? That's fine, Barbara. Looking good. Don't worry, Barbara, there are 18 other people just the same as you. Right. Tit? That's not the sort of language Baden-Powell would have approved of. But it's quite mild for Ben Barber. Hi, my name's Ben, and this is my family. Very outspoken. Ben is never lost for words. It always um, He has got a, quite a fruity vocabulary as well. Cheeky towards um, people in authority, because I just want to test them, do you know what I mean? See what they, see what they come back with. Ben, film, don't. You're such a penis. You're it. <laughs> I'm sorry, you don't get film. It comes down to him actually trying sometimes to... Um, impress. Yeah. He tries to impress a little bit too much. What we've got here is... a homemade chariot. And as soon as we've made this, will be conducting a chariot relay. In the chariot relay, you will select the smallest or lightest member of your team. The passenger will then get carried around to the other end of the pitch and then back here by the other guys. It's all going well. 
Until Barber lets slip with another expletive. Right, Barber. I can't believe this. This will be taken further, Barber, and this will be reported to the headmaster. Your inability to control your filthy mouth, which I hope you didn't learn in your family home, I hope somebody else taught you these words, okay, is absolutely unacceptable in this school. If the worst... Sorry, now is not enough. Go and stand over there by the fence and face the fence. We need to keep you away from the other boys, so you don't contaminate them. Barber's blown it. The boys will be taught a range of skills over the next four weeks, culminating in an overnight camping expedition with the girl guides. A scout's motto is always be prepared. And these homemade chariots are a kind of boy scout ambulance. Skip will start the race at this end. I'll be at the other end. I will make sure, gentlemen, that the winners, the winning team of this race, get some kind of candy treat or extra pudding tonight. Right on, Skip, standing by. In box, set, go! Oh! <laughs> So how do these modern kids feel about their latest pastime? In this time of the year, you wouldn't exactly be in a park scouting with your mates, you know, in summertime. <laughs> it wouldn't be, it'll, that's not what you'd be doing in summer holidays, but I mean, now that we're here, I mean... Have to step out. It, it is good though. It is good. I'm really enjoying it. Do you know all the outdoor activities and things you don't usually do? You're always learning new skills, learning new things, and having fun. And you do like get closer to everyone you're going to be living with for the next four weeks as well. It's good. Um, it's good. All friends. Social is a social thing. This. Yeah. It's so good. We all just making friends. It's real good. I love it. Foul-mouthed Ben Barber will have to sweat it out, whilst the staff decide on a suitable punishment. <laughs> Act 1, scene 1, is the scene where the Montagues and the Capulets meet and fight and the Prince warns them that if they ever fight again, the people that have caused the argument will be put to death. Now, During their four weeks at Hope Green, the kids will stage a play under the watchful eye of Miss Gibson. We don't have a huge amount of time to put this on, so I've had to think about it in terms of who can rehearse when. Traditionally, the lead roles in the play are given to the head boy and head girl. Luckily for Perry, this year's production is Romeo and Juliet. Goyne's going to play Romeo, Steve is going to play Juliet, and um, <laughs> Casey is going to play the nurse I'm sorry if you didn't get the part you want. While the rest of the class rehearse their scenes, the principal characters get down to business. We have to make a decision here. I'm going to leave the decision up to you two. We can either do... <laughs> You're going to have to be more professional about this. The headmaster is going to be watching this. Right? You can either do the kiss of the hand, or, or you can go for the cheek, or you may give her a peck on the lips if she agrees. <laughs> It's up, it's up to you. What do you want to do? You can do the back on the lips if you want. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, right, right. When are you going to kiss me so I'm so not if like... You, if you do Saints Do Not Move, you'd say that and then I'll just start. Okay. Saints Do Not Move, they grant prayers for sake. Then move not while my prayers affect I take. Thus from my lips by thine my sin is purged. Then have my lips the sin that thou took. Sin from my lips, so trespass sweetly urged. Give me my sin again. <laughs> Perry seems to have forgotten it's just a play. It's acting! Right! That was, that was good. <laughs> no, it was good. The acting was good. Was very good. <laughs> Unfortunately, this Romeo is not getting anywhere. It's only a kiss. I don't fancy all of it. All acting. <laughs> acting. All acting. 
To round off their week of lessons at Hope Green, the boys have a PE lesson with Mr. Austin. Ready, and one, two, one, two. Over the next four weeks, they'll receive command-style PE teaching, as it was in the 60s, in a bid to improve their fitness. Ready, train. Right, pick up the shots and get in the position I was in when I was demonstrating. According to these boys, PE is the most regularly bunked off lesson in their modern schools. I throw! <laughs> right, let's not have the little screams after we've thrown. No wonder when you see how hopeless some of them are. Are we ready? Let's hear the roar this time, gentlemen, like lions. Off we go! <laughs> Mr. Austin is not impressed with their attitude. Get your vests tucked in. Barber. Roberts, you are trying my patience. When Alex Roberts mocks his command to pull his socks up, Sir fails to see the funny side. Roll them down. <laughs> Roberts, go and get changed. And then go and stand outside the headmaster's office. Do that now. Go. Get out my sight. Go. to determine a lot with like 1960s teachers how far you can actually like, go before before something that before a consequence happens you don't know it's quite hard to like read the 1960s teachers that's how I put it Alex Roberts is used to playing the clown in his modern school and getting away with it easy my name's Alex this is my school I may be predicting E in mathematics but I'm gonna get an A star in Pimpology I'm a Pimpologist, a star candidate for the old Pimpology. Uh, the Pimpology? I have no idea what it is. I don't even know, I don't even want to know what it is. Oh, well, Pimpology teaches you how to sort of get a woman, how to treat them really, because if you can't get a girlfriend then you just like study a bit of the old Pimpology and there's certain hints and tips in there. I ain't going to miss school for beans, I can't wait to get out of it. I think he finds school quite difficult, I think because he is lively, he, he wants to be on the go all the time and he finds it quite difficult to sort of sit and concentrate at school. Pay attention at the start if it's something I want to learn, but then you just get distracted straight away. I just think he finds it difficult, and he finds yeah. it very difficult just to knuckle down and sit there and... I'd say I was lazy um, when I'm not motivated to do something. If I've got an incentive to do it, if there's money at the end of it, I'm straight up there, I'm ready to do it. Oh, man. <laughs> Joking in the class, really. Spontaneous, like, jokes. Like, come out if a teacher says something, I could twist their words around. It's just really fun, because that's how he, he wants to be. Alex Roberts clowning around in PE is the latest in a long line of misdemeanours. Ben Barber is in trouble for saying the F word in Scouts. They're about to experience the school's most severe physical punishment, and a substitute for caning. Right, gentlemen, now the pin begins. Pick up a medicine ball each, quickly. Hold it out in front of you, arm's length. Feel the pain coursing through your shoulders. Right, and say after me, I must respect the school rules. I must respect the school rules. Say after me. I must respect the teachers. I must respect the teachers. I must they must hold the ten pound ball for three whole minutes. I must respect the teachers. Louder, Barber. I must respect the teachers. Is this funny, Barber? No, not at all, sir. I must respect the school rules. It's different now, isn't it, sunshine? Not governed off so much now, is it, Barber? No, not at all, sir. I must respect the school rules. I must respect the school rules. I must respect the teachers. I must respect the teachers. Tremendous. Do you mean that, Barber? Yes, sir. I hope so, Barber. I hope that's not a smile, Barber. I hope no, it's pain. No, it's pain. Good. That's what I like to hear. I must respect the school rules, Barber. I must respect the school rules. Tremendous. I 
Let's get those arms straight. Straighten your back. I must respect the school rules. I must respect the school rules. Louder, Roberts. I must respect the school rules. Louder, Roberts. I must respect the school rules. Good man. Drop the medicine ball. Right. It seems the punishment has had some effect. I think from now on, me and um, Alex are going to be all quiet. I've got to. Yeah, we've got to, otherwise we're actually out. We're going to be like kicked out. I'll get into trouble autonomously, not even noticing what I'll do wrong. So, I've just got to see it from the teacher's perspective, but look at myself from that way, and just from my own view, I'm just like, I think I'm normal. It's quite hard adapting from my, my 2004 way I approach teachers and, and speak to them and yeah. to a 1960s one. Because, no, that would just be a normal day for me, but now it's like serious trouble in the 60s. Still to come, there's news from home. And the kids let their hair down. What you want? Baby, I got it. It's Sunday. No lessons for a whole day. And tonight, there's a dance at the school social club. But first, there's news from home. No, one of my friends says, I haven't got you a present, but you know I'm going to be the friend that writes to you every day. Where's the letter? <laughs> yeah, I know. I don't understand how much you need letters here, though. Yay. Oh, no, it's really neat. The children have been at Hope Green School for one whole week. The weekly mail drop is their only contact with the outside world. Did you get a letter from your boyfriend? Yeah. I don't think, yeah. Oh, I didn't. Cheeky. But not everyone has received a letter. I told my friends to like, write to me like on the start of the week so I'll get it by the end of the week and they haven't written or anything. And people said to me that they were going to write, write every day. If I don't get letters, letters next week, I'm just going to be really, really sad. Every girl that's got a letter has opened it and started crying. Because, I mean, there's not something that, you know, makes is making them homesick now. But, I mean, for the boys, I'm not sure anyone's going to do that. Because, I mean, letters are letters. And we're not touched by letters as much as anything else. But I think girls, the girls in here are touched by the letters. Uh. okay i think i'll feel better after this just right now a bit uh a bit sad but it's okay i mean my grandma wrote to me just telling me what happened in 1964 all the events like little history lessons that was quite good that reminded me of her actually because she's like that anyway but it's not all bad news as it's the weekend there's a slight relaxation of the rules the girls can wear full 1960s makeup, complete with false eyelashes, in preparation for the dance. It's kind of a bit, I don't know, shocking for me because I hardly ever do this. So all of a sudden seeing my face with big eyelashes and blushes and lipstick is really not me. I'm just thinking what my parents are going to say, it should be funny. <laughs> I'm going to really enjoy listening to some music. I've not heard music in ages, well, apart from in the assemblies on the piano. For the boys, the main issue is that of smell. They've come up with a novel way to keep B.O. at bay, rubbing talc into their clothes. Perry first had the idea of putting talc in your clothes to clean it. I've, I've, I think I've used talc once in my life. Yeah. I'm loving talk now. Not everyone is impressed with their new look. Oh god, I still look like twat. Just twat for our ties. <laughs> this is the first time that the boys and girls have had the opportunity to dance together. But the rules are clear. Only hands can touch during the dance. Stand by, gentlemen. Leap to your feet when they arrive. Oh, Yay! Oh, my God. Right, teens, stand by to rock. Yay! 
Put your cola on the sofa to the high by high and the lights down low and get ready for some officially oh, sanctioned rubber stamped rock and a roll. Let's have the wicked wicked picket, a smash from last year. Despite the lack of designer clothes, Alco pups and cigarettes, not to mention anything else these modern kids use to get their kicks, everyone has a great time. Avril has got over her letter from her boyfriend. Sheena impresses Erin with his fancy footwork. And the teachers show that they can be hip too. Well, sort of. Only lovesick Perry Goyen can't seem to get near Stevie Harmon. She's playing impossible to get. Okay, good rocking tonight, kids. It's the end of week one. And the only major casualty is Perry's broken heart. After ignoring Perry all evening, Stevie has replied to his advances with a firm no. I was really, I really felt something for her beginning this week, and it seems to have fizzled out just slightly. And what I needed to happen really was her to have the same feeling as I did when, when I was feeling this immense feeling of, oh, this is exciting, but she didn't have that. And I needed her to have this, this sizzling happening when I was having a sizzling happen, happening. And, and it just, mine's fizzled out and, and hers never sizzled. It's a shame really because I wouldn't mind a little romance because I've not really had a girlfriend before. So I, I wouldn't have minded one, you know. Silence! Next time on That'll Teach Him, mock exams. There's progress in Brick Lane. And matrons on the warpath. What's all this? Get it folded up properly.